Thanks to Blinkist for making this video possible. This is Abu Dhabi, the capital of the United Arab Emirates. The city is home to a number of important government buildings and is the site of the UAE's National Petroleum Company. While the nation became rich from its extensive oil and gas reserves, the government is beginning to transform this entire region with a goal of shifting the economic balance. But the question remains if this plan is even remotely possible, and how it will impact the future of the capital city. The United Arab Emirates is broken into seven different emirates, with Abu Dhabi being the largest one. The capital is the country's center of politics and industry, and is a major trading hub for the country. The emirate became rich after oil and gas reserves were discovered in the 1960s, which was a key source of revenue for the country. Compared to the seven other emirates in the nation, Abu Dhabi has the most oil reserves. While the city has been historically dependent on revenues from this industry, the government has began investing into a number of initiatives to transform Abu Dhabi into a sustainable and diversified economy. One of the largest projects being Yas Island, a $500 billion development project located east of the city. The man-made island is the second largest in the world, with a land area of more than 15 kilometers. While the island can be considered man-made, there was no sand dredging involved in constructing the project. This is because the landmass was already connected to Abu Dhabi, and a canal was dug separating it into an island. The project is being developed in three phases, with the entire development costing over $500 billion. After being announced in 2006, the first phase opened in 2010. The island is home to a number of hotels and resorts, catering towards the tourism industry. This was one of the first large-scale tourism projects to take shape in Abu Dhabi, and it turned out to be a big success. More than 30 million people visit the island each year, contributing to a large percentage of the tourism economy in the capital. While this project was just one step to begin diversifying Abu Dhabi's economy, the country has outlined a number of large-scale development projects that they plan to add to this region. But many questions remain as to what the goal of these projects actually is, and how it will impact the city in years to come. To get a better understanding of urban planning and design, I listened to Happy City by Charles Montgomery, which I found on Blinkist. Blinkist helps you discover and understand powerful ideas from books and podcasts in a short amount of time. The app pulls out key takeaways and puts them into 15-minute text and audio explainers, which will allow you to get the most important information in the shortest amount of time. While listening to the book, I learned how the happiest cities are a result of good urban planning, and how specific decisions can result in long-term effects for large amounts of people. The best part about Blinkist is that I can go straight to the final summary to understand the key points from the entire book, and read over the seven key ideas from the passage. Using the Blinkist app, you can understand powerful ideas in just 15 minutes, and discover new topics in an ingenious way. When you sign up using the link in the description, you can get a free 7-day trial and 25% off a premium subscription when you use the link below. Urban planning is an important aspect of Abu Dhabi's economic development, and the city has outlined a 100-page plan to address this. The Abu Dhabi Economic Vision 2030 explains the city's vision for the future and how its economy will diversify into new industries. While the city is planned to have large-scale development projects, there is a sharp divide between Abu Dhabi and Dubai, and there are multiple factors behind this. For one, Dubai experienced rapid urban development, which caused widespread infrastructure-related problems in the city. In order to fix all these problems, the UAE government created the Dubai 2040 Master Plan. The plan has a goal of solving most of the problems the city is currently facing, mainly in the transportation sector. Abu Dhabi wants to avoid this type of rapid urban development, and instead outline a plan to slowly transform the city. The different approach may prove very beneficial in the end, as key elements of the city will be well thought out and planned before starting large projects. The plan Abu Dhabi 2030 is a strategic framework that will guide the future development of Abu Dhabi over the next 10 years. It sets out a clear vision for the Emirate, which is to become a world-class city and leading global center for business, tourism, and culture. 
The plan sets out a number of specific goals and targets that will need to be achieved in order to reach this vision, and outlines a series of development projects that will be implemented to achieve this goal. From transportation to land use regulations, the plan covers every aspect of how the city will be developed within the next decade. While examining this plan, it's fascinating to see how the government has created a blueprint for the city to grow in a natural way. By avoiding rapid development, Abu Dhabi will stand out from Dubai by creating a more natural society that was not created with an intent just to focus on the tourism sector. Another factor is the time frame of the plan. By spending 10 years on this plan, every aspect of the city will be well thought out, and key decisions will be made without compromise. By using the maps provided in the 2030 Urban Plan, we can understand how zoning will play a key role in the city's future development. By breaking the city into specific sections, the growth can be more natural. There will be space for parks and residential zoning while balancing industrial and tourism zones at the same time. This is one of the key differences between Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Since the capital is broken into regional zones, the entire city will not cater just to tourism, and can instead be more of a traditional city such as New York. The innovation behind these development projects is quite unique, and sets them apart from many other large-scale development projects we have seen taking shape in the country. For example, each project on Yas Island was developed in three separate phases, allowing each part to be fully completed before moving on to the next part of the project. This allowed the island to be developed in a strategic way, and prevented the entire project from becoming too large of a job to complete. By using satellite imagery, we can see the progression of some of these development projects, such as Yas Bay. Between the years of 2010 and 2020, we can see how the government has completely transformed the island, and built one of the most unique structures in the world. Panning outwards, we can see how the entire island is nearing full completion, after more than 10 years of development. What we can understand is that the Abu Dhabi government intends to transform the city but wants to avoid rapid development projects in comparison to Dubai. The approach of developing a city makes a lot of sense and allows it to grow more naturally. While most of the development projects that were announced were impressive in scale, so far most of them have been brought to a reality and not left abandoned as a result of rapid urban development. Throughout the next 10 years, we will see how Abu Dhabi transforms, and how the Urban Development Master Plan plays a role in how the city is built. While Yas Island was just the beginning of a long list of future projects, it set the groundwork to show how taking on one large project at a time can result in all parts becoming completed. But for now, only time will tell how Abu Dhabi will be transformed in the future. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, and thanks again to Blinkist for sponsoring this video.